why is the soul was my third question that I asked God. Okay, why? What's the point of this whole process that you've just described to me in somewhat fascinating uh, terms? And God said, well, you know, the, the, the purpose of the soul is to give me, meaning God, this is God talking, the purpose of the soul is to give me an opportunity to express and experience myself in every one of the endless, countless, multitudinous ways that life itself makes possible. That I want to experience myself, divinity, in all of its myriad aspects, in every one of the ways that divinity itself could possibly be expressed or experienced through the process that we have come to call life itself. So that life is, physical life, is God's expression of itself and God's expression of its primary and fundamental nature. The fundamental nature of God is twofold. One, creativity. God is that which creates. That is, it shifts. It doesn't really, in the strictest sense, create, because everything that's ever been created already is. But it, it moves through the process of manifesting the deep awareness of what it is. And that process is what we call on earth creation. And so God's fundamental, I want to say job, function in the universe, is to create. And its fundamental characteristic is that of the creator. Now, what's interesting about that point of view is that every religion on the face of the earth preaches that particular point. There are a lot of places where religions on the planet diverge, a lot of differences between the world's great religions. But virtually every religion on the planet makes this statement in unison. That is, they all agree. God is the creator. That is the first and fundamental characteristic of God. The second characteristic of God is that God is freedom. God is that which is ultimately, totally, and completely free. That is, there are no restrictions, no limitations uh, on God itself. Because God is all there is, and there is nothing else. So there would be nothing else to restrict it or to limit it in any way. So what God has imbued in all of the individual aspects of itself is that which we call the power to create and to do so freely, to freely create whatever it wishes to produce. And the process by which sentient beings, such as human beings, decide what to create is what we call evolution. Because God's essential characteristic is creation and freedom, God will never stop any one of its manifestations God will never stop any one of the sentient beings that have emerged through the, through the process I've just described. God will never stop any one of those sentient beings from creating anything it wishes. That which you would call good and that which you would call not so good. God has no judgment about it because God's great desire is simply to allow you the freedom to create yourself in exactly the way you wish to experience yourself. And often when sentient beings are emerging through the process of evolution. Uh, we do that in a way that one would call trial and error. That is, we decide what we want to be, and then we try that on and see if that really feels as good as we had hoped that it would. And if it doesn't, we do something else. We adapt ourselves. All of life is adaptive, as a matter of fact, as a means of guaranteeing its sustainability so that it can produce more functionality with regard to what it really is, so that it can function, if you please, as life itself, emerging through life in the process of life to produce more life, to produce more of itself. So we do those things in our daily experience as sentient beings on the earth through the choices and the decisions and the understandings that we have come to and the actions that we take and the thoughts that we hold in our mind. That is how the whole thing works. The question becomes, however, what is the source, the central source of those thoughts, of those decisions, of those choices? Is the central source of the impetus, the motivation behind those choices, decisions, and actions, the thoughts in our mind, the data that we are holding in our mind, or is it the data that we are holding, I want to say, the data that exists inside of our soul? Uh, see, that becomes, that becomes the key question. 
the, the key question in front of all of us. Are we making our life decisions, our life choices, based on what our mind is telling us or based on what the soul knows to be so and that the soul chooses us to become aware of if we will simply listen, open our ears and listen to what the soul is offering and inviting us to experience. We are, of course, as you know, I assume you know, that we are three-part beings made up of body, mind, and soul, body, mind, and spirit. The soul is the part of us that's directly connected to divinity, as I've been explaining to you now for several minutes. The mind and the body are additional physical manifestations of the soul, which exists outside of the body and holds in what we call our mind, and uses the mind and the body as tools with which to express in physical reality the desire and what I want to call the agenda of the soul. But the mind is so magnificent, it's such an incredible uh, instrument, such an, a, a remarkable creation of the whole process of life, that part of life that separates us from manifestations of uh, physicality at somewhat lower levels of consciousness. The mind is such a magnificent instrument that it actually can have the power to cause us to do things that have nothing to do with the agenda of the soul. I often say, and I've written in a book called The Only Thing That Matters, I, I wrote a statement that said 98% of the world's people are spending 98% of their time on things that don't matter. Boy, that describes my life completely before the age of 52. I was doing a lot of stuff, uh, but none of it really mattered in the sense that it did not relate to the agenda of my soul and had nothing to do with my soul's purpose in manifesting my body and my mind through the process called physicalization. So I began to question all of this when I had my very first conversation with God. And I began to ask some fundamental questions as they relate to the existence of the human soul. Questions like, who, who am I? Who am I and what am I doing here? And what is my purpose in life? I've, I hope I've begun to give you some answers to those questions here so far, that I am an individuation of divinity, an aspect of the divine, and I am here in order that my soul may experience and express its ultimate identity, its true self, may experience and express divinity, flowing in it, through it, as it.